I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I messed up and I've let a lot of people down. I decided not to do the FA Cup semi final. And I really should have done. Finish 6 5. <laughs> Why did this happen? How did this happen? You know what? Rather than me try and explain the 11 goal thriller we've missed out on, let's just watch it. Welcome back to episode number 24 of Newcastle. This is very unorthodox, but genuinely, I, I have a lot of regrets in my life. This it might well be up there at the top. I thought to myself, we won't do the FA Cup final, as Jao Felix bent in a goal with four minutes gone to make it 1-1. I did wonder, am I going to regret this? And then Adiemi finessed that in. And I'm starting to think, oh no, this is, this is the makings of a really entertaining game. And after last episode, where we've had two one nils, like, you know, a goal thriller would have been quite nice. Erlin Hardland scored for them, and this was one of three goals they scored on the bounce before half time to make it 4 2. Um, yeah, Erlin Haaland is really good in this save game. He's got 41 goals in the league. I don't know how many he has in the FA Cup. He grabbed that one there, and not long later, 43 minutes gone. It was 4-2. I think if we're counting correctly, that was a good header, wasn't it, by Haaland? So at the break, I get a bit shouty-shouty, but we're losing 4-2. So I feel to myself, well, it's probably a good job we're not doing this as an episode because it's going to be a disappointing defeat. Then Musiala scores, and I think, ah, ah, maybe, maybe I'm going to regret this. Then Haaland scores, I think, his fourth of the game. I've lost count at this point. This was mental. I don't know if you can tell. I'm not quite over what happened. Almada whipped in, Tamori won a header, that made it 4-5 to Man City with 12 minutes left. We made it 5-5, the ball forward to Adiemi and a nice little finish. And then with the last kick of the game, yep, I say the head of the game, 95th minute, Tamori grabs another, it finishes 6-5, there's limbs in the ground, the players are loving it, I'm sat with my head in my hands thinking, why did I not live commentate this game? Anyway, that's what's happened since you were last here. Actually, that is a little white lie. We did also play Bournemouth. In this game, Sesko got a goal. He's been in some good goal-scoring form. We fully rotated the team. We won the game. That's all that really matters. As you can see, looking at the table, we're still in second. Still got a little healthy gap to the teams behind us. And well, what that means is we're back today, and it's the Champions League semi-finals against Arsenal. Just to have a look at the Champions League and how it's played out to this point. Of course, we beat Atletico Madrid 8-0. We then beat Chelsea 2-0 and we find ourselves here. As for Arsenal, they knocked out Real Sociedad. And then most recently, a 7-4 win against Manchester United. Yes, this is a weird team. Mikel Arteta's men, the last couple of years, have been a top quality team, finishing third and then second in the league last year. They were predicted to finish sixth, if we just look at the season preview. Um, our prediction, by the way, is rocketed right up throughout this year. But yeah, predicted to finish sixth, maybe a little bit of an outside team, perhaps a surprise. They've made it this far in the Champions League. If you're wondering about their squad, here's how it looks. They've got a load of players ineligible and unregistered to play today. I really feel like we should be winning this. Now, when it comes to our own squad, we're fully rested. We're ready and raring to go. And after the Chelsea episode last time out, I'm hoping for... A more convincing performance, I suppose. This is a game that I back us to win. This is a kind path, I feel, to the Champions League final. When I look at the team, I'm relatively happy. The only player I'm not really happy with is Mukiele, who currently wants a new contract. That was rumbling on in the background. He asked for one again recently. I'd already asked him to sack his agent. That didn't help my case. He asked again a week later. He's unhappy. There's a small part of me that wants to take him off and play Ben Godfrey just to kind of prove a point. I mean, should I do it? Would you do it? When I look at the players, there's not a world of difference between them. You know what? Ben Godfrey, I'm going to play him in this game. This is a big call. He better get like a hat trick now from wide centre back. Otherwise, we'll mark this down as an error. Besides that, it is a full strength team. I'm ready and raring to go. Let's just do this. So there was a temptation going into this game to play the 4 3 3 to really go for things from the off and try and hurt Arsenal. The reason I'm not going to do that is because our five at the back system has looked very, very good from a defensive point of view, which I think is something that could be important today. Uh, at home, I back us to win this game. If it's still 0-0 after maybe an hour, we'll go on the more attacking. We'll try and seize the advantage of being at home. But this is a system capable of producing goals whilst remaining firm at the back, which I think in knockout football is just always essential. 
We've got a chance here. Almada plays it to Adiemi. That is a filthy pass. And not a bad little finish either. Adiemi, who grabbed a couple in that game against Man City, is the goal scorer. Five minutes gone here. I mean, we have to talk about this pass. This is a great start. Musiala lays it to Almada. And then it's just a little dink. So intelligent. Adiemi breaks the offside trap. Thought for a second he could be offside, but the flag's not raised. VAR hasn't flagged it. And 10 minutes into this game, we're a goal to the good. Do you ever have those kind of cup runs you go on where you feel like if you don't capitalise on this opportunity, you've blown it free here? This semi-final feels like a great opportunity to make it to the final. Arsenal are a team that we've been a little hit and miss against, but on our day, I think we are the better team, even on paper. I wouldn't necessarily say that against some of the other teams left in the competition in the other semi-final. And, uh, well, this kind of first half has just really fizzled out. That goal was the opening opportunity of the game. Since then, Arsenal have grown into it. At the break, the teams have identical XG, which is interesting. Um, I wanted to try and fire up the players a little bit. I've just upset the defence. Ben Godfrey, by the way, currently on a 6.8. So not doing great. But then again, we've not conceded. So I don't know if we can really criticise him all that much. Throw in on this near side, Livramento, Almada. He's already assisted one. Crossed by Livramento was blocked, but Declan Rice should be there to well, keep the play going. Almada going to play it into Declan Rice, who plays it forward to Adiemi. Going to use his pace to get in behind. He plays it across. It's spilled by the keeper, Ramsdale. What are you doing? We probably should have scored from that. I want to check. Is it Ram It is Ramsdale in goal. What is he doing? Answers on a postcard. That was some shocking goalkeeping. And to be honest, we might live to regret that mistake. Maybe a chance here, though. Oh, my word. Gabriel. Well, Gabriel, it's not Gabriel, he's not an angel. Uh, he's got it away from danger. I guess maybe he is Arsenal's guardian angel here. Musiala, big tackle by Dembele. I think Arsenal are going to live to fight another day. Nervy moments to start this second half. Almada whipping it in. Ben Godfrey's there. And I'm, I'm a genius. I can sit here smug now. I can be happy about it. Oh, well, we make it 2-0. It's a ball of quality in. Was it Almada over it? It was indeed. Ben Godfrey probably isn't as good in the air as Mukiele. It's probably the one area of Mukiele's game where he is the better player, but we're not going to complain. We make it 2-0, and, well, we've been the better team here. Let's make a couple of subs. Calvert-Lewin's been uncharacteristically quiet. We're going to bring in Sesco. Elsewhere, I think we will take off Livramento and bring in Mbabu. For a second, I was considering bringing in Mukiele, but I'm upset with him. He won't sign a new contract. He wants a ridiculous pay rise. He can sit on the bench and think about what he's done. Anyway, and Babu on off the bench, of course, homegrown at club at right back. Brought back a couple of years ago now. He's settled in. This year played more of a squad role, but still a very, very good player. Oh my word, we have to score this. I mean, if we'd bottle the second leg somehow, that Sesco miss is going to go down in infamy. Would Calvert-Lewin have scored? We may never know. It was calamitous defending. The last ditch block was sensational. And I mean, if they go up the other end and score now, we're going to look back on that moment as one of the biggest regrets in Newcastle United footballing history. Ben White plays it forward to Pepe. Gvardiol reads it well, though. If we get a third here, it puts us in such a good position. And it's going to be played forward to Sesco, who, well, he's not the fastest of players, is he? Even fresh off the bench, he's probably not going to get to that. Arsenal looking to build from the back once more. They've got Marcus Antonio and Gravenberch. That is a, a pretty terrifying, creative centre mid pairing they've been pretty quiet in this game though as Tomori's going to step out with the ball and give it to Declan Rice he plays it through to Sesco should finish it does finish it 3-0 83 minutes gone here we have a foot in the Champions League final my friends and that is exciting and also kind of terrifying because I've lost uh, the three cup finals we've had here at Newcastle so far and if you watch my last series of FM21 we lost three Champions League finals in a row I'm terrified to do it again. I know that's not the attitude I should have here. As a, well, there could be another highlight. If we make it four, it could get embarrassing for Arsenal. This game has got away from them. Defensively, we've been superb again. In fact, I think in the knockouts, we've not conceded yet in the Champions League. Right? I think, I think that's the case. Cesc goes through again. He's going to score again. It is 4-0. Calvert-Lewin. Friendship ended. Sesco is my new best friend now. Adiemi turning provider, and we have carved Arsenal open on multiple occasions here. This second half has been an absolute clinic. Really nice build-up play. 
If you were calling a set piece FC after the last episode, I hope we've been able to show you a little bit of nice football. He did score from a throw, uh, from a long free kick, but we all ignore that. Musiala, make it five, Musiala, make it five. I'm getting carried away. It was never going to score from there. I mean, there's four minutes of added time. Arsenal are probably praying for the game to end. This is a boxing match. It's probably been called off by now. And, uh, well, we have now scored a set piece. It's 5-0. If you thought that, you know, the six goals against Man City was a fluke or some of the other outrageous scorelines where we've scored a load of goals were kind of weird. Um, this is kind of how it's been happening from time to time. It's 5-0. It's 5 I don't know what to say. I mean, we're not going to make it six with 30 seconds left, are we? Like, what do we do? Sesco heads over. He could have had a hat trick on off the bench. I mean, this is absolutely bonkers. I, I, I can't quite believe what I've watched. I mean, is there another highlight here? This must be the end of the game, right? It must be. Ben Godfrey stepping out with it. Tries to play for Adiemi. The ref's going to blow his whistle, I assume, here. That is, I mean, for the neutral, it's pretty disappointing. A 5-0 first leg win for us. I'm delighted. I mean, is there a chance? Godfrey's going to put it in for Sesco. And that is it. I was hoping there was going to be a late sixth, but it's not quite happened. An avalanche of chances to end the half. And end the, what was a sensational second half for us. Caesars come away 5-0 victors. That is pretty bonkers. Some really nice goals in there, though. Um, I don't really know what to say. That is it's what we needed. If you're wondering about the other Champions League final, the teams in there are Liverpool and Real Madrid. Liverpool won the first leg 2-0. I feel like Manchester United and Liverpool are just the thorns in our sides as Newcastle boss. We could be playing them to end the year. This could still be a late showdown in the Premier League, although that is a little unlikely at this moment. Anyway, we've got to go forward. We've got the Arsenal second leg. It's in a week's time. I might play a rotated team in it. I don't really know how to feel. Yeah, this has been mad. Okay, folks, we are back here for the second leg against Arsenal. I didn't expect to be in this position. We've played one game in midweek. We beat Leeds 2-1. For this game, I played a full-strength team. And to be honest, given the fact we scraped by, I'm a little bit relieved about that. If we just look at the team, the plan today is to fully rotate the squad. I think even with our B team, we're not going to blow a five-goal lead. I mean, fam famous last words. Um, I was just before we came back, just reveling in our defensive record. I know I, we talk a lot about how good we are at set pieces and kind of using our physicality. Defensively, we have been perfect. We have not conceded in the knockout stages of the Champions League. The number of clean sheets we've had, honestly, is kind of astonishing. Um, I think, obviously, if you don't concede, you can't lose unless it goes to penalties. But for the most part, we've been just top draw and well I'm hoping we're going to be able to maintain the record today even with a rotated 11. Livakovic is going to stay in goal. A right centre back we're going to go with Mukiele. He does not want to talk to me okay he does want to talk to me about a new contract. He didn't a week ago after the Arsenal game because I went and had another look. He wants £275,000 a week and the reason he wants that money is because the new budgets have been set for next season. You can see here the wage budget uh, sits at £2.837 million. That gives us about £250,000 a week. Our transfer budget for the summer, almost £130 million before we make any sales. I am kind of thinking Jude Bellingham might be a really smart player to go and sign before the season even ends. He's got a release clause in his contract of £104 million. And uh, I think, I mean, he's ridiculously good. It's Jude Bellingham. And this year in Football Manager, I think he's better than he was last year. Um, would it be mad of me just to make the bid now during the episode? I mean, you can see here, this is the last contract offer I gave them. I've wanted him for a while, everyone. You know what? I'm going to do it. It might mean that the summer transfer window isn't all that exciting if we go and spend 100 million now. But I've been eyeing him up for ages and... Naturally, we would move Musiala to centre attack in mid and then play Jude Bellingham alongside Declan Rice at centre mid. I wasn't expecting to make that bid for Bellingham, but it's just a spare of the moment thing. You can see here Bellingham compared to Declan Rice. It's just absolutely ridiculous. He's only 20 years old. It's, yeah, it's crazy. Right, we're going to sign him. I've decided. Hopefully his wage demands aren't too unreasonable. Shall we talk about the team for today's game? As you can tell, I'm, I'm fully focused on this second leg. Um, right, so Mukiele, he wants a new contract. I can't give it to him. 
Godfrey's going to come in and just play at centre-back with Michaelenko playing left centre-back in the system for us today. Of course, last year he was an ever-reliant left wing-back for us. This year, he's made a handful of appearances, 16 starts, 10 appearances on off the bench. Um, some at left back, some in this left centre back position. Hickey is going to play at left wing back today. A player who, to be honest, has been very, very disappointing when it comes to his development. Signed for £10 million. Hasn't really lived up to my expectations. Been dropped by Scotland recently. I'd be quite relieved if we could sell him on for anywhere near the valuation labelled there of £22 million. A right back, we've got Mbabu. He came on off the bench last game, a player who I'm more than happy to trust in a game like this. At centre mid, we are going to go with Zakaria as the ball winning midfielder, and alongside him, another former Bundesliga player in Taliso, uh, who again has just been a quite consistent player. I mean, if we just look at the squad view on this screen here, you can just see every single player here, for the most part, has well, just about got double figures in appearances, with the exception of Hickey, and the vast majority of them have around 15 starts. We have rotated the team throughout this year and kind of relieved we've done that because the way things are playing out, we are going to be in an FA Cup final, a Champions League final, and still trying in each and every one of our Premier League games to really hunt down the opposition. Anyway, at centre attack in mid, we are going to go with Joe Willock. This man is a bit of a Swiss army knife of a midfielder. We kind of just play him wherever we need him to play and he tends to do a relatively good job there. Two goals in the Champions League already this season for him. And then up top, we are going to go with Gabriel Barbosa playing as the advance forward and alongside him, Sesko, who got two goals off the bench last time out. He's going to come in and play the Calvert-Lewin pressing forward role for us. On the bench, Calvert-Lewin, Adiemi, Almada, Musiala. They are four players where if this game starts to go drastically wrong, we can look to bring them in. Elsewhere, Tomori, Livramento and Rice just give us a little bit of coverage should any injuries come up. But anyway, this is kind of a nice, relaxed environment, I feel like, for us to have a look at some of the, the second team players. I'm always conscious of the fact that with these episodes, we come back for what is most of the time must-win games. Games where I'm going to play the best 11 available, I'm not going to rotate things around. I feel like today, this second half, is just a rare chance to shine, kind of shine a spotlight on those players who uh, maybe don't always get all the love, attention and headlines that they deserve. Um, so we'll see how we get on. Arsenal are playing the exact same system they played in the first leg. They lost their game in the league as we beat Leeds United. So I feel like they're a little bit of a wounded animal now. Maybe they're going to have a point to prove. I would like to believe we're going to have a good defensive performance here and just see out this game. And we're going to show the quality that we have when it comes to our squad depth this year. Because, I mean, this is pretty much an entirely rotated team. If we could come out of this game with a win, that would be a, a pretty big statement to make. Naturally, this is not an opportunity you get all that often to play a team quite as rotated as this in the Champions League semi-final. But after the first leg, why not give some of these players a chance to prove themselves? And Babu is dancing down the line. Really nice dribbling. Gives it to Gabriel Barbosa. Ten minutes gone. It's 6-0 on aggregate. I have to remind myself, there are no away goals, but... I mean, Arsenal are good. They did turn things around massively against Manchester United in the quarterfinals when they won 6-1. I can't see them scoring six here. Where do things have happened, though? So maybe we shouldn't get too carried away just yet. It really speaks in volumes, doesn't it, for my mindset of the fear of the bottle. There were 6-0 up, kind of a fixture like this. And even in the back of my mind, I'm sat thinking, it's not done yet. Tovan bringing the ball forward for them. They've got a few options in the middle. Tommy Yasu plays it to Dembele. B big block and then Hickey going to get it away from danger. I mean, we've got the clean sheet for now. Uh, if the second team could keep a clean sheet here, that would be a pleasant surprise. I am risking what would be an emphatic record to have. Imagine if we could get all the way to a Champions League title without conceding a goal in the knockouts. That would be bonkers. Elsewhere, Gabriel Barboza showing that he's quite a capable footballer. It's his second goal of the game, Taliso, showing that age is just a number. Willock with some nice hold-up play. Taliso making a run through the middle, threads it through, and then Barboza tidy finish. Ramsdale, not very good there, I think is probably the, the kindest words you could say about his attempted save. It's not very often that I shout encouragement from the sideline. I think today is an encouraging day uh, for the players. We've been just crazy. I feel, I feel like a broken record, but kind of looking at our team, it looks like a broken record. We're just playing the same thing over and over as we score more and more goals and Sesco gets in behind Rob Holding. Can he finish it? Oh my word. Oh my word. It is 8-0 on aggregate. 
We are three 0 up without a B team playing, and I have been obviously fiddling with the tactics and tweaking stuff back and forth throughout the well the entirety of the save game. I feel like I've got two tactics now that work. I actually got the achievement after the last Arsenal game for getting perfect team dynamics. This is a squad that hasn't had that many new faces injected into it last summer. The starting 11 has remained relatively unchanged and, well, the system hasn't changed much either. And the players just seem like a well-oiled machine where we're just rolling teams at the moment. Oh my word. I mean, what a 45 minutes. That is the best team talk I can give them. Don't feel like we need to tell the players all that much there. This is a B team which has just taken every single chance that's come their way. They've got to be a little bit embarrassed here, surely. For me now, I just want to try and, well, not let them score a goal. That, that would be the dream. And Babu, crunching tackle, had to get that one right. Could still have some defensive action to do here, though. So Arsenal trying to play party pooper. I don't think they're going to score eight, but they could ruin our clean sheet record. It's Tommy Yasu down at right back. He plays it inside to Patrick DePaula. Now with Kieran Tierney with a little bit of space maybe to pick out a cross in the middle. I mean, they've got us penned back for the first time across two legs that I can remember. We're on the back foot. We're having to do a little bit of defending. Is there a killer pass? Smith Rowe, I think I saw was on a 6.1 rating there in the middle. It's a lovely bit of build-up play. The back heel very nearly ended up in the back of the net. I think it deflected off our defender and away from danger. And with 27 minutes left, more defending maybe. Dembele, Livakovic for a relatively simple save. This might seem mental. I'm going to start time-wasting. <laughs> and I'm also going to go to positive just because I want to see out the game. And I feel like minimising our risk of getting caught out on the counter is probably the best way of doing that. I'm also going to bring in Rice and Musiala because both our centre mids are on bookings. Maitland Niles is bringing it forward. I mean, if they score now, it's a disaster. It's a huge block at the back. I think that was Hickey with it at left back getting in the tackle. 20 minutes left. Arsenal have stepped things up. They've left it a little bit too late and they're still yet to find a breakthrough. And it could go from bad to worse. Joe Willock is enjoying his day against his former club. Godfrey steps out from defence with the ball. Michaelenko should play it wide. Musiala. Godfrey, dinked wide to Hickey. Can the left back whip in a ball of quality? Musiala, Sesco, lovely build-up play. This is so nice. It's put in, the cross hits the crossbar and it falls to Barboza. I mean, when you looks in, you looks in. We make it 9-0. Nine, 9 I'm running out of fingers to count on. It's, oh my word. I mean, it's been a pleasure to watch. This cross here by Hickey is absolutely tragic. The fact it hits the woodwork and then falls to Gabby is probably the most fortunate thing you'll see in the match engine all year. <laughs> but we're not going to complain. I mean, could we get 10? I'm caught in two minds here. Do I want to go for the 10 nil, or do I want to keep the clean sheet? I mean, if they get one, I'm going back on attacking. Hickey puts in a questionable tackle. Smith Rowe, Livakovic, can you keep the clean sheet? Of course he can. The finish was awful, but Livakovic makes a huge stop. I mean, we've bottled some games over the years here at Newcastle. We've never lost 9-0 in a semi-final. Michaelenko to Hickey. I want the 10th, lads. I, don't, I know we're time-wasting. I know it's counterintuitive. I'm caught in two minds, folks. Michaelenko's just chilling with the ball. Uh, we're just, we've gone to the, the Emirates, and we're just kind of trolling. We're just, we're just kind of having some fun, dwelling on the ball. The, fact, the away fans are chanting, Ole. And it's just, it's just sad, really. Sesco Willock... I mean, if he gets the 10th goal against his former club, it would be sensational. It's there. It's 10-0. This is a demolition job. And, uh, yeah, the, the B team's done okay here, haven't they? I mean, I said that they don't get to, to play very much, and it's kind of a bit of a shame. I thought here with Willock having players swarming around him, the chance was gone, but he picks his corner, finesses it in. I mean, we've got 10 now. Do we go for 11? The answer is no, we're not going to get 11. We have just won 10 nil on aggregate, though. Barboza gets a hat-trick. Sesco and Willock also on the score sheet. That is bonkers. Probably the, the best episode so far, I'd say. And it could get better. Does Jude Bellingham does actually want to talk to us? Our long-term vision, I mean, it is to win the Premier League. Yeah, I'll make that promise to you. He wants £275,000. Our current highest owner, earner, I think he's on 150000 Actually, did Calvert-Lewin get a new deal on slightly more? No, Calvert-Lewin's is 140 k 
I mean, for Jude Bellingham, I'd go to... I'd probably go to 225, but I want to try starting low. I'm going to nego negotiate hard here. I'm hoping that there's a bit of wiggle room here. £215,000 for Jude Bellingham. I mean, it just feels like the right thing to do. Defensively, I think we're sorted. Even from a midfield point of view, I feel like anything we add now is kind of just overkill. You can see here, four players with over 15 assists. Goal scoring wise, we have goal scorers. If you were wondering, by the way, we have a Champions League game. How's it gone? Second leg hasn't been played yet. Should we go and find out who we're going to play? We've booked a place at Wembley, which is where the, the Champions League final is going to be. Barboza, you were good, mate. Right, Liverpool won the first leg 2-0. Is it going to be them or Real Madrid we're taking on? Let's go find out. Bellingham might even sign for us at the end of today's episode. That would be neat. Okay, we're progressing here. Real Madrid at home. Lost 2-0. So Liverpool win 4-0 on aggregate. Not, not quite 10-0, but they will be our opposition in the Champions League final come June 1st. The draw is apparently pitting Liverpool's riches against our more modest budget. Not, not sure about that. I'm not sure who's written the article here. Um, Freya, whichever press person sent us this through, may, maybe have a chat with them. I think we're spending more money, at least on players per season, than they are, certainly for the last few years. But wow, a Champions League final to look forward to and an FA Cup final against Wolves. That's a game that we should win, although we said that last year, didn't we? Um, in terms of what's left of this season, for people wondering, obviously we've got a Champions League final now all of a sudden. When it comes to the Premier League side of things, I can't see us catching Liverpool in the remaining games. So I think next time out, unless something drastically, radically mad happens, we're going to come back for a double header. It's going to be the Champions League and also the FA Cup. Two games that I back us to win. Unlike last year, there's actually a gap between our cup finals to rest the players and play full strength 11s. We're in a position where I can rotate the, the squad for the remaining Premier League games, really leave our best players fully fit for the final. But, I mean, given what we've just witnessed there, I feel confident that even if the B team had to play, we could probably give them a mighty good game. Okay, I don't know about you. One of the craziest episodes we've ever had. We've signed Jude Bellingham. Well, almost. I mean, he's going to sign, surely. It's going to happen. I have faith. Next time out, two cup finals. Jude Bellingham arriving. It's going to be a carnival atmosphere. I hope you guys are excited for it. Let me know what you made of that performance. Like I said, we've been tweaking the tactic over the last kind of three seasons now. Feel like it's in a really good sweet spot, especially with the players that we have. I've seen loads of comments saying, Jackie, you're going to share the tactic. I feel like it's now in a position where I am actually happy sharing it. So in the next day or two, I'll try and get it up on the Steam Workshop and available for download for everyone. Maybe I'll even do a video covering the tactic itself, just a bit more of a breakdown. It's not really something we've done in detail in a video. Could be quite nice to do as kind of a, a piece of bonus content. Anyway, Big episode tomorrow. I hope you're excited for it. I've lost my mind. We've won 10-0 in a Champions League final. I don't know how I'm going to sleep tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. I'm out. Oh my God. Absolutely bonkers.